You're watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. A beautiful afternoon in Tampa, Florida at Raymond James Stadium. It's the East Carolina Pirates at two and three in the University of South Florida Bulls at four and one. 85 degrees, a couple of clouds overhead, but you couldn't ask for a much better day for this noon kickoff here between ECU and USF. Mike Cousins, former college football coach, Dan Hawkins, glad to have you along. And we start with USF. Their talented quarterback, Quinton Flowers, a native of Miami, a junior in his second year as the starter. He can run, he can throw, he is dangerous anywhere on the field. He can do it all, Mike. He's a very powerful athlete. He can run, as you mentioned, he can throw it. They're trying to get him a little deep today. He actually leads this Bulls team in rushing. Both he and Marlon Mack averaging over six yards a carry on the ground. They've got a lot they can do and make opposing defenses worry. USF, if they were going to worry about anything, it was going to be who is starting at quarterback for ECU this week. Philip Nelson is the guy who's going to take the snaps to start. Got dinged last week against Central Florida. They wanted a redshirt Gardner Minshew. He came in relief. Of course, James Summers is always the Wildcat quarterback. Started this last year's quarterback. He's listed as a running back this year, but subs in as a Wildcat guy. One of the big issues for East Carolina and part of their two and three start has been self-imposed problems. Minus nine in turnovers. South Florida is plus seven. Emilio Nadelman puts it in the air to get this afternoon started and five yards deep. It's a Pirates return out to about the 15 by Chris Love. Hussein Howe, his running mate back there, was trying to get him to stay in the end zone. Normally when you catch that kickoff going backwards, you just need to take a knee. You have very little shot at getting it back past the touchback mark when your momentum's going backwards see if they can get some forward momentum with Philip Nelson who was knocked out in the third quarter on a hit late and it went through a concussion protocol has returned now and we'll try and get this powerful offense in gear here to start the handoff is to James Summers who's got a first down and clears the 35 on first down. And that's a great sign early on for the Pirates. They knew they had to run the football. They have not done that well. One of the best passing offenses in the country, but have not run the ball well. That was the 47th carry of the year for Summers, who's now gone over 250 yards on the year. Plays a variety of spots for this team, including running back. And he takes the carry again, going right through the middle after a gain of 21. He goes for about five yards right there, the senior from Greensboro, North Carolina. One of the advantages the Pirates will have a little bit is the Bulls' off defense does not do a lot of exotic things. They're a 4-2-5. They try to keep the ball in front of them, play off, run to the ball, tackle, swarm, cause turnovers. But the scheme isn't really confusing. Nelson to the perimeter with the pitch to Summers. And a heavy dose of the six foot three, 218 pounder to start the game against this Bulls defense. That's a great sign when you can run it three times in a row, couple first downs, keep the pressure off your quarterback. Strength of this Bulls defense is right up the middle. Keeping it on the ground, and nothing doing there. Brought down by Kirk Livingstone off the perimeter. It's year one at the helm for the 38-year-old Scotty Montgomery, the former offensive coordinator for David Cutcliffe for the last two years in a very successful program there in a native of North Carolina. From Lawndale, about four hours outside of campus, and trying to do what Willie Taggart has done here at USF and really own in-state recruiting. Nelson takes off and does pick up the first down. Hawk for a team that comes in second to last in rush offense in the American. The Pirates is a pretty good start. Yeah, they, they knew they had to run the ball better. They've got to take care of the ball and do well in the red zone. Areas they have not excelled in yet this year. Phillip is a good scrappy athlete and he can run. Rather probably have him slide and not take a hit on that last run. So 
Summers again. Probably a little bit of a surprise to the Bulls because this has not been the pirate attack thus far this year. It's been a lot of number nine throwing the ball around the yard. Six plays and six rushes to start the game for East Carolina. Which can really move it almost 400 yards a game through the air. Nelson short handoff. And the Bulls were ready for that one, going to Anthony Scott at the top of the depth chart for running backs, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Running it up inside is going to be a tough, tough duty today. Deidre Sanat comes in at 305 pounds. They couldn't say enough about him. Number 10 inside playing defensive tackle. He is a load with great explosion in the defensive line. First third down of the game for ECU, Summers falls forward and the initial spot looks to be just a little bit shy of the first down marker at the 32. Like the aggressiveness. Got a feel when they make a call like that on third down they're thinking if we get close we go ahead and stay here and go for it. Normally this has been a case when Summers has come in at, at the Wildcat quarterback but they're going to leave Phillip in the game. Scott at running back, fourth and short. In the early going, they go to the air. And it's down to the 29-yard line for Zay Jones. Keep your eye on number seven for the Pirates, Zay Jones. He is a really, really smooth receiver. Been a little bit nicked up this week, but he can do it all. He's a get in and out of your break guy as well as a speed guy down the field. That was their first pass of the game. Now Scott tests the middle again. And Jones off going back to him. He wore a walking boot during the week. And that was something of a concern, but only a mild one for the staff. Because it was more of a bruise than a real injury, as you might say. If there was a fracture or a break, that wasn't the case. Just to make sure their best wide receiver was in as good a shape as he could possibly be. Now a heave toward the sideline. That's well out of bounds. Nelson. Got tied up there and threw it away. That was smart of him. As we mentioned before, they get down in this red area. This is where they really struggle in this offense. Twelfth play of the drive for the Pirates. It started back inside their own 20-yard line. Summers comes out of the flat. He's got one blocker and two defenders, and he shakes them both. He gets inside the 25-yard line. He needed the 19, and so that's not enough. And here comes the field goal team. South Florida trying to bring a little bit of a pressure, came off that, and ended up trying to green dog that, meaning jump in the back coming out. Just clogged it up just enough to prevent the first down. Well, Hawk, there was a question of who we might see coming out to kick a field goal here, too for ECU. This is a 40-yard try for Davis Plowman, who's 6 for 10 on the year. His try has the distance, and it is good. There was an internal competition between Plowman and Verity this week. Plowman emerges the winner and gets the Pirates on the board. The Pirates looking to go to three and three, get three on their opening drive, a 61-yard trip down the field for Scotty Montgomery's club. Meanwhile, in year four for Willie Taggart, still looking up, eight wins last year, and he's four and one getting going today. It's time for Hawks' word, and it's breakout. Why, why say you breakout? Breakout, the first part of the season, you're trying to get out of the blocks fast. In the middle part here, the middle third, now is when all your training, all your conditioning, your culture, you've got to get into a good, hard stride just like a miler does. And now is when you find out who pulls away from the pack. A short kickoff from Caleb Pratt, and it's fielded nicely by USF at about the 35-yard line by Mitchell Wilcox, the healthiest tight end on the roster today. So great starting field position here coming up for the prolific offense of USF and Quinton Flowers, the junior from Miami. 
Really, really like Quentin Flowers. He has really emerged. Talking to Willie Tagger yesterday, I think those two had a mind melt and a heart melt. Figured out what Quentin was all about. They go fast. He can run it and throw it. Flowers hands it off to Marlon Mack on first down. He gets a great burst, the junior from Sarasota, Florida, forward for nine. Now, yesterday we were talking to the Bulls coaches. They were lamenting not being able to have a lot of long drives, and some people complain about explosions, but the Bulls have plenty of explosive players in their lineup. Going to the edge, Rodney Adams, their leading receiver, and also a speed guy. Gets quickly into plus territory to the 49-yard line, a pickup of 13. Rodney really talented. I think that's why you saw the short kickoff from the Pirates there. See right here, they're going to play the full width of the field. Look at that trips formation all the way up against the sideline, clearing out that box. They, they get the ball snapped. It's about one second, and they've already gained seven yards to Adams. Yeah, they go fast. They put those three guys up against the sideline. If East Carolina doesn't match them, they're going to get the ball out there in a hurry. Roddy really explosive with the ball in his hands. Flowers to the edge once again. And a quick throw is caught by Tyree McCants. Really, really, really strong hands. You like it when your receivers can make those tough catches look ordinary. See here, they're really trying to clean out that box. What I mean by that, Mike, you get, the players have to declare, when you get that bunch formation wide on the sideline, East Carolina is forced to get out there and cover those guys that they're gonna throw the quick screen to them. And then if they shift those defenders out there, Flowers, Sees he might have some room to run. Meanwhile, it's Mack. There's a flag thrown as he's edged out on the boundary by Deshaun Amos, the nickelback. And we'll check this and hear from Todd LaPenta, our referee, for the first time this afternoon. Holding offense, number 77, 10-yard penalty, fourth down. The penalty is on Marcus Norman, the right tackle, and although he started in week one for USF, he's not been their usual right tackle. Billy Atterbury suffered a fractured leg last game. Norman reinserted into that starting right tackle spot with Atterbury out for some time. Tough break is now they've got to punt the ball. That brings on Jonathan Hernandez, a sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. Former Florida State Seminole and has been quite a pleasant addition for this coaching staff, averaging about 43 yards a kick. 13 of his punts have gone inside the 20-yard line, and there's another one. Fair caught inside the 15, so ECU's defense holds, and they'll go back on offense when we come back to Tampa. Look, I'm not a hat guy, but I'm pretty sure that's not one you buy off the rack. We welcome you back to Tampa. My cousin's Dan Hawkins, and East Carolina up 3-0. Well, they can move it when they want to, especially through the air. Fourth in the country in passing yards per game, but they've also been their own worst enemy this year. Red zone efficiency, second to last in the country, only ahead of Purdue, scoring about 58% of the time. That's field goals and touchdowns and 16 in sacks allowed. Pirates ran the ball their first eight plays to start the game. Very successful now. Ironically, when their drive stalled, they didn't run it much down at the end. And a give to James Summers again, who was the workhorse on that first drive. Talk about rushing offense. 131 yards a game on average. That's 106th in the country. And when we give you these numbers for context, that's 106th out of 128 teams. I was so, just going to tee you up on that because <laughs> I know you know there's 128 teams. Not as good as their passing offense has been. Outside, Zay Jones tries to break away. Third down and manageable coming up for ECU. Similar type offenses in that they both spread it out. They both like to go fast. You've got a running quarterback in Flowers on the other side. Phillip is a little more of a passer. 
for the Pirates. But Nelson's a good one. He's completing 71% of his throws coming into this game. He's got a quick throw off, and it's tipped away. Great defense. Augie Sanchez, the middle linebacker, makes it fourth down. Augie's a really heady player for the Bulls. I like watching him on film. He's got good feet, good eyes, just kind of knows what's going on in the middle. Bring a little pressure off the outside. Augie knows where that pressure's coming from, knows where the quarterback wants to go, gets a hand on. He's just a really smart, instinctual player. He wants to be a charter boat captain one day. If football doesn't work out in the long term, you got to know the waters well. He knew where he was going there. Worth Gregory gets the kick away. Dearness Johnson from the 39-yard line. He picks up a big-time block and goes to the ECU 45. Terrell Richardson helping him out with the block there with the Bulls. Three nothing ECU. Dearness Johnson, he is dangerous, and so is the South Florida offense taking the field. Kick off your week. Kick off your week five NFL Sunday with us on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern NFL Insider Sunday edition with all the early breaking stories and injury news. And then at 11, it's Sunday NFL Countdown. The crew takes you right up until kickoff. Both shows are also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. The Bulls here at Raymond James Stadium, their lovely home, also home to the Buccaneers. Hunted on drive number one, and Quinton Flowers with a toss for Marlon Mack on first down. He's got first down yardage. Well, they gave it to him on first down last time, and here the first play of the drive, and it's been a big hole both times. Great job, Yonte Leston, getting out front, getting that block there, springing Marlon Mack right there. That shows Wilcox. Expect. Expect Quentin Flowers to get a run in here now. He has not run it yet. But he's the leading rusher on this team. I would expect him to break it out at some point. Max stymied along the line by Mike Myers, the defensive end. And Flowers, as you mentioned, is the leading rusher by a hair here coming into the game. 383 yards on the ground for the junior quarterback and his counterpart Number five in green and gold, 333 yards. The Pirates show blitz. Flowers had a couple of options, didn't like either one of them, and still tumbles through the middle for a nice game. Really mature decision making. He had both guys covered deep, had a chance to throw it out to Mac out wide. That was remotely covered. Pulls it down, doesn't throw the ball into harm's way. Nice job managing the situation. Three wide receivers here on third down. He opts for his running back, Mack. Inside the 20, that's a first down. Three flags come in from all over the field. Marquez Valdez Scantling trying to block on the outside. That may be the aggressor on the penalty for USF. Tough on those receivers when you're out in space, keeping the hands in that you don't hold, don't block somebody in the back. And of course, with the rules the way they are now, you can't block back in towards the ball below the waist. Fouled against offense off play. Block offense number 11. That penalty is declined. Foul. Block below the waist. Offense number 89. That penalty will be accepted. 15-yard penalty and a third down. Getting closer and closer to the end zone. These first two drives for USF and penalties have thrust them backwards. It's hard sometimes when guys are playing fast, which the Bulls do, and they do so much perimeter work, it's difficult. Those perimeter blocks are not easy. From the block in the back. The penalty that was accepted was on number 89, Mitchell Wilcox. Significant because he's not their normal starting tight end. 
Elkano Dillon is. He's out with an ankle injury today. Now Flowers wants to take off, and he's in a foot race. Hard hit as he lowers the shoulder down to the 25-yard line. And you'll see that's how Quinn Flowers plays. He is a running back that can throw. He'll put his shoulder down, and he'll run people over. He's not a slider, and they do run zone read in this offense, but they do plenty of just straight quarterback runs as well. Going for it on fourth down. We're down in five for the Bulls. Flowers, the throw, looked to be short, although the spot is forward of the chains for Dearness Johnson. Little Texas route, we call it over the middle, tight end clears out. Back shows like he's going flat, then works back inside in that open area. And right back to the line of scrimmage, quickly. Johnson made the catch for the first down, takes the handoff, and he picks up eight. Johnson, the junior from Immokalee, Florida, is a guy who Willie Taggart says unequivocally, best football player on our team. Yeah, and he didn't shy away. Had a big game against Florida State. Does it all. Catches, runs, special teamer. And there gets hit for a loss. Looked like it kind of surprised Quentin. I think we had a little. Yeah, he's tapping him on the head saying, hey, that's my bad. I should have kept that. I think it got on him in a hurry a little faster than he expected the read. Deion Pratt sneaking off the edge from the linebacking core to make it third down and seven from the 17. Plenty of time over the middle. Up top, the ball is jarred loose. We may get a targeting call there in the end zone. Meanwhile, ECU going the other way, and Flowers stops it from being a touchdown. Call it an incomplete. And as you mentioned, possible targeting call. An incomplete pass at the goal line for Rodney Adams, and we'll wait before we get into any rules explanations here. Fans reacting a little bit to the big screen in the stadium. If there is going to be targeting, the rule book says when in question it is a foul, and that may be what the officials are discussing right now as to whether this is going to be. A targeting call on the field, which if it is, it will go for review upstairs. First of all, targeting defense, number 26. Official timeout, that player is under further review. It's Colby Gore. All right, Hawk, it's Rodney Adams, number 87. Going to make this catch. And we've got rule 914 here. It's a forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. And in this case, going to catch a pass, Rodney Adams certainly qualifies as a defenseless player. So then what do we have to look for beyond that? Was there an upward thrust or a launch from a crouch to make forcible contact to the head or neck area? Or was there a hit with the crown of the helmet there? What did you see? I think there was a hit with the crown of the helmet. It was hard to see from the camera over on this side of the field. But it looked to me like he touched the top left-hand side of Rodney's helmet with the crown of his. The other thing I, I like what you said, Mike, when in doubt, it's a foul. And if we're going to make the game safer, I, and I'm good with that. When in doubt, it's a foul. And I think that's the way it should be called. Now, of course, you've got the replay booth. He could call it without there being a foul. He could review it and take a look at it, or he's looking at it right now to confirm. 
Now, Replay can overturn this call, and, and the argument that Scotty Montgomery may have been making here is that the rule book also notes, and this is verbatim, that targeting means that a player takes aim at an opponent for purposes of attacking with forcible contact that goes beyond making a legal tackle or playing the ball. So perhaps he's making the argument that Colby Gore, who was called for the personal foul there, was going for the ball and not trying to target Rodney Adams. I think your past experience working in the department, the uh, transportation department, going all those traffic violations has helped you <laughs> in this category. Just so that folks can understand what the argument is on both sides, the officials have a lot to look at there. Now, I don't know upon, we saw it a couple of times, I don't know that it was with the crown of the helmet. It looked like it was more with the face mask, the crown being defined as the area above the face mask. So that's well, been, I guess that's, that's why there's a jury <laughs> by Peter Voss, yeah, the replay official upstairs. I would say he did get him with the crown of his helmet. And it was hard because the camera was primarily on this side. And the standard, of course, we should mention that they have to have here to uphold the call on the field is indisputable video evidence to determine that this should be a targeting foul. Which, of, which, of course, the penalty for that is an ejection from the game for Colby Gore. There I do see a launch, though. A launch from a crowd. Yeah. I, I think he kind of ducked his head a little bit. He was a defenseless player. Did hit him with the crown of his helmet. Scotty not liking it as well. Is his coach going to stick up for him? And there was a play earlier this year, I believe it was with uh, Penn State, where there was a targeting call made where a player was going for a ball and the flag was thrown. I believe the, uh, the uh, ejection was upheld, and that's where the uh, clarification comes in for the rules to say it's not just any time that there's contact, because if a player is going for the ball and does not qualify for one of those other items, it may not always be targeted. After further review, running on the field stand, Six has disqualified himself from the game. By rule, the inadvertent whistle will be disregarded since it was an accepted foul. The penalty be, the penalty be half to this is two on the left hash mark. Please reset the game clock to two minutes and 15 seconds, please. So there was not indisputable video evidence for the replay official to say there was not targeting on that play. Hence the ruling of the call stands. And they also had the clock down to two minutes and eight seconds. So part of the review there was also finding out the proper time on the clock, two minutes and 15 seconds. I know Scotty's upset, but I think they got it right. I really do. Defenseless player, I do think he hit him with a crown. And so by rule, Colby Gore, a freshman who they're very high on in the secondary, is ejected for the remainder of this game, but can come back and play in full in their next game. Had he been ejected in the second half, then a suspension would have been served into the first half of the next game. Coaches all around the country talking about strike zone, basically just like in baseball, from the sh shoulder, the armpit, all the way down to the knees. I think that was a solid call. USF with a long wait, but here come the Bulls. 21 personnel got a tight end, two backs. Don't see this a lot from the Bulls. This is Willie Taggart, old school. This is his wheelhouse comfort zone. He wasn't raised as a spread guy. Flowers keeps it. Going left and then coming back toward the hash mark, and he gains three to the five yard line. Surprise has taken this long for him. We talked to the Bulls coaches yesterday about how many runs do they like to have the quarterback Flowers take. They didn't really know. They wanted to give the ball to, to, to five. Marlon Mack, but Quentin is so explosive, and it's great to have a quarterback that can run down here in the red zone. 
And off board to Ernest Johnson trying to go to the outside. There's a flag down on the back side of the play. And he's dropped for a loss of a couple. It's tough. That counter play was designed to go up inside. And anytime the running back bounces out, sometimes you get your blockers grabbing guys in a with different angle. No personal foul for the player participating without a helmet. Be third down. So what happens when you lose your helmet, you have to quit playing essentially. You can't chase the ball. So you have to stop. See right there, he just keeps playing. You can't do that. Deion Pratt, the linebacker. That's tough. Your instincts tell you to keep playing. But when your helmet comes off, you have to stop participation immediately. All right, third and goal. Throw to the edge, and the Bulls are in. Touchdown, USF. It's Dearness Johnson, Quentin Flowers' go-to guy. Always good to have the junkyard dog. They're going empty, spreading it way out. Look at that. You've got two on two. They're banking on Dearness Johnson being able to break a tackle, and he does. East Carolina already missing a member of their secondary from the targeting call, unable to come up with, with the tackle. See what impact that has as the afternoon goes on against an offense that scores 46 points a game for USF. The extra point is good from Emilio Nadelman. An eventful drive. Targeting stalls in it leads to an ejection. And the play calling by USF gets the job done. The Flowers to Johnson for six. All right, we are uh, coming back to the surface slowly after a very deep dive into the bowels of the rule book in section 914 there. On our way back up, my cousins Dan Hawkins, the junkyard dog, scoring the touchdown. Dearness Johnson, the junior from right here in Florida. That's what they call him. The guy that Quentin Flowers looks for whenever he's in trouble. There was no trouble there. He knew exactly where he wanted to go. And the Bulls, who score 91% of their trips into the red zone, one of the better numbers in the country. Get the job done. Chris Love wants to take it out again. And two he for two, learn. he would have been better taking it to the 25 with a knee. So Dearness Johnson Hawk, here's another guy. We talk about Quentin Flowers can do it all. Well, Flowers doesn't play special teams. <laughs> and he's thrown a few passes as well. He can do it all. Coach Tiger jumped on the table right away and said, bar none, best player on our football team, could play the linebacker anywhere you wanted to him, he could play. I think the Pirates got to go back to staying patient with the running game like they did on the first drive. Don't get away from it. Nelson throws under pressure in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and it was a great spot for Dietrich Nichols to try and come up with an interception there for USF. Philip Nelson double clutch through it off time just a little bit. Needs to be careful. He's got good arm strength, good balance. He's a stocky guy. I watched him throw before the, the game. Thought he had a lot of sting on the ball, a lot of zip. But you can't double clutch and throw it that far away. Second and ten, and the inside handoff does not yield much for a team that last week only rushed for 33 yards in a loss against Central Florida, a team that a year ago went winless. The difference in the package, the Pirates here, kind of going zone read, but Philip Nelson is not the guy they want to have the ball, whereas Quinn Flowers would love to have the ball on the other side, so the only option for Philip is to throw that ball out wide. That was over the middle, intended for Jimmy Williams. He was held up there by Nigel Harris. And that looks like it may be pass interference against the senior linebacker. 
Got him coming inside on a dig route. Pass interference. Defense. Number 57. Automatic first down. And it is indeed against Harris. These two linebackers, Augie Sanchez and Nigel Harris in this 4-2-5, have to do a lot and are expected to a lot, both in coverage, blitzing, covering up gaps. Nigel got out wide there and just kind of came over the top. Made it an easy call for the official. First six plays, they got 48 yards. And the 11 plays since, just 19 yards. And that run by Anthony Scott brings us to the end of quarter number one on a sun-splashed afternoon here in Tampa, Florida. So far, so good for ECU, holding the Bulls in check as they try and avoid their first four-game losing streak in 12 years. The USF Bulls with a 7-3 lead over East Carolina here in Tampa. And a good start on the ground for the Pirates, a team that averages only 151 yards a game, second to last in the American, 58 through the first quarter. No turnovers, no sacks, running the football. Nelson goes out of the pocket and jukes his way toward the sideline. Doing a nice job to shake a defender on the way there. Jamon Thomas sent to the turf. Phillip can run around. There's no doubt about that. But after the shot he took last week against Central Florida, you have to be a little bit nervous. But again, not taking the sack, not turning it over. Something they've been working on a bunch for the Pirates. Really have kind of gone away from the rushing attack since the first drive. They clear things out and go to the flat. It's a first down and then some with rushing room for James Summers, who's gotten a big bulk of action here in the early going. 17 yards there from Nelson. James Summers done a really good job. We did a Pirates game. They've got a hot route coming outside. Augie Sanchez coming off the edge. Phillip does a good job getting rid of it. But I think Summers done a really good job fitting into another niche on the team. And easing out of that quarterback role, but it's really stepping up as a running back. That pass skips off the chest of Jimmy Williams incomplete. It'll be second and ten. As we talked to Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator this week for ECU, he said pretty bluntly, we're not where I'd like us to be talent-wise at running back or along the offensive line, and this probably represents something a little bit more creative to give that part of their offense some juice. Well, you kind of have to when you're not able to knock people off the ball. Jay Jones makes the catch, and it takes two defenders to bring him down further into USF territory. Yeah, and, and getting the ball to number seven there, Zay Jones, is part of the formula. But getting the ball out quick, using multiple formations. As we mentioned before, this front of uh, South Florida, particularly up inside, is really stout and for you folks at home just watch along the line of scrimmage you're going to see a little green push all the way to the left there you're not going to see much white pushing that was a big green push to send summers backwards if you can't knock them off the ball then you kind of have to get into a side to side zone type they're just trying to go inside zone South Florida does a nice job getting off blocks up inside. Daniel Awolake does a great job splitting that B gap and getting up inside and causing some havoc in the backfield. Fourth down and three. Eight seconds on the play clock here for Nelson and the Pirates. He gets the snap off with one second. With some time, he throws short, and it's a turnover on downs. USF comes up with a defensive stop. Really nice job. It looked like it was going to be man coverage. A couple of crossing routes up inside. Ended up being zone coverage.
This college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit WatchESPN.com today. And that's exactly what we've done here in our beautiful booth at Raymond James Stadium, watching Auburn with a 21-0 lead in the second quarter over Mississippi State on the road. Quentin Flowers back to work here for USF. And he wants to run. When he does, look out. This is not a guy who's going to slide and become defenseless. He goes for about seven there on first down. He is dangerous. The Pirates outrushed the Bulls in the first quarter. Not something you expected to see. But this empty package is wicked because, boy, it forces you to get outside, and then there's nobody for Quentin Flowers. He sees that everybody's guarded. He turns to the perimeter and runs out of bounds to pick up a first down. Makes it really difficult in coverage, Mike. When you have, when you play man coverage, you've always got to have somebody on the quarterback, and then it's tough because if it's a linebacker, is he athletic enough to run with a quarterback? They stay in the same empty set. Main Street is wide open. After a pickup of 14, it's a run forward for about eight there for Flowers. They're running just a little inside counter play. Pulling the tackle up inside on the backer. And Marlon Mack, the running back sent outside, drops the ball there and stops the clock at 11-18. Got a little nice package in this empty set. Saw Dearness Johnson last drive. Mack was blocking, but five guys out wide. Look at that, they try and rotate pressure. Flowers goes the other way. He picks up his blocks, and he's down to the 15-yard line with a great block from Marlon Mack ahead of him. This is really wicked stuff because he's got an option to throw the ball outside if he likes the numbers, but he doesn't tackle pull up inside. East Carolina was trying. You're going to see right now. Scotty Montgomery tried to get this defense organized against this empty package. A little bit to catch their breath, a little bit to try and game plan and see if they can slow down Quinton Flowers, who's quickly headed toward the goal line. South Florida, 4-1 squad with a 7-3 lead, and on the move here inside the red zone, their offense, Hawk, is outstanding. They've got 10 straight games with at least 200 yards rushing. That's the longest streak in the country. Second closest is New Mexico, which, oh, by the way, is a triple option team. <laughs> yeah, and they're also ripping off plays on this drive at a 13.5 second clip. So you better get lined up in a hurry. Felt so far, so sorry for the Pirates. They wanted to play with 10 guys here. But boy, they're spreading the field out and then letting Quentin Flowers do damage up inside. He looked like he was going to throw for just the second time on this drive. He runs for the fifth time, and now nearly 50 yards rushing on this drive for Flowers, whose only pass was incomplete, but it was dropped by Marlon Mack, the running back. What a really dynamic player, and I'm really impressed with his decision making. He doesn't get jumpy, knows he's got a chance to score points down here, and doesn't just throw the ball into a crowd. Now a true give, looking to gain the corner. And Mack is pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. By Deshaun Amos, third down coming up. They went with an unbalanced look over to the right-hand side to the top of the screen. I really thought Quentin was going to pull that and try to get outside. East Carolina really struggling to get lined up. Yeah, they had some late scrambling. The inside give is a, perhaps a blessing in disguise there as Mack doesn't get what he needs for the first down. And we didn't see immediately here with a fourth down coming up any field goal kickers rushing onto the field. And I think Rodney Adams is going, hey, throw me the ball. We have numbers advantage out here. But he goes over, gets with his buddy and says, hey, there's not enough guys to cover me out here. So it's going to be a short try here for the Bulls coming up as Nadelman comes on for the attempt. I know it's early and, and coaches want to be conservative. This is going to be a try from 26. But you just sit there and, and you watch what they did on that drive and the momentum they had and how out of sorts 
they had East Carolina. Let's say they go for it and don't get a first down. They don't score. They still got them pinned back deep. Would you would you entertain the thought of going for it? Yeah, but fourth then down? guys like me and you say, what an idiot. He should have <laughs> kicked the field goal. Then he can't be right. No. I'm with you. I think if you feel like you're stopping them, you you go ahead and play defense and and uh and they've had been so good, they've been hard to stop on four downs. I was actually sort of surprised that they didn't flip the ball out wide in some of those reads, which they've had success with. They certainly have. And you look back to what they did last week in a win on the road uh, against Cincinnati. That was a game that was close in the first half. And then USF pitched a shutout against the Bearcats in the second half. So it's an offense that scores 46 points a game, fifth in the country as far as that number goes don't overlook what Darren Hiller right there who's the run game coordinator with Willie Taggart and TJ Wiest who sets up the pass game can do because they've got a lot in their pockets my cousins Dan Hawkins glad to have you with us today on the side of the state that has been spared of the weather from Hurricane Matthew we have certainly thought a lot about those on the other side of the state and many who have been forced to evacuate their homes to come here to Tampa to seek refuge. Chris Love on his third return of the day goes out across the 20. And tonight it's the Sunshine State Showdown, something we'll never try and say 10 times fast. Number 23, Florida State, and number 10, Miami. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ABC, the Canes with their first big test, App State, Georgia Tech. Not quite exactly what Florida State brings to the table as the Knowles have won the last six meetings. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN and Miami native Dalvin Cook against USF back in September, a huge game for the Seminoles. Rush on first down, and it's James Summers for ECU and a pickup of a couple. He comes in in the Wildcat, or I guess we'll call it the Wild Pirate. It's kind of redundant, isn't it? I would guess. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you to talk like a pirate. Philip Nelson, the quarterback, coming back in. Trying to use Summers to get a little bit of that running game. They had success, as we mentioned, on the first drive. Haven't had much after that. Summers again. And he gives it up to Devin Anderson, the sophomore from Henderson at North Carolina. Great job keeping his pads down and just pushing. Didn't have a whole lot. Really smart by Scotty Montgomery and the staff, I think. Just trying to settle down, get back into the groove, take a little pressure off the passing game. And keeping Summers in there on third and one. See if he gets the carry here. He does through a nice sized hole on the left side. Takes a couple defenders to make the stop on him. And he gets a first down for the Pirates. It's really difficult. They're just running a straight quarterback zone. First and 10, a gain of maybe half a yard there. Augie Sanchez. Quickly coming inside, shoulder to shoulder with Summers. This is not foreign to the South Florida defense, obviously with Quentin Flowers and seeing him in practice, seeing plenty of quarterback runs. Seven and a half minutes to go here before halftime. And Nelson back into the game at quarterback. His quick throw caught by the leading receiver, Zay Jones, and an extra effort earns a first down into USF territory. Really smart job by Zay, just getting his pads down and getting vertical right now, not trying to work laterally, knowing where the sticks are. That's a smart football player using really good technique. An 11-yard gain there for Jones, who's caught a pass in 41 straight games. Nelson steps up, tucks it and runs. He's got good speed and good enough for another first down. South Former. Florida playing zone. Sorry, Mike. South Florida playing zone, playing quarters coverage, four over the top. Not a lot of defenders underneath when Phillip took off running there, be able to get him tracked down. 
Nelson, the former Minnesota Golden Gopher, also spent time at Rutgers, did not play for the Scarlet Knights, reviving his career here with the Pirates. Turned left and threw right for Jones. A senior from Austin, Texas, coming off a 17-catch performance last week against UCF. And comes into play this week with the most receptions by an active FBS player. Now they had success with Summers running the football from the Wildcat. You get down here in this end of the field, don't be afraid to go back to that. They were productive with it. Hard sometimes for a play caller. It's fun to call all those passes. Maybe not quite as exotic to call those runs, but got to have it down on this end of the field. Scott one in motion. And the throw goes way out of bounds for Nelson, who didn't see that play develop to his liking. There you see the differences in these two quarterbacks now. Quinton Flowers is going to pull that and run it. Philip Nelson is going to pull it and try to throw it. Now, they did a good job covering the quick screen outside, so he just had to throw it out of bounds. But the difference in the offense when you run zone read with a runner and zone read with a passer. Try to get close. They've been going for it on fourth down. Just try to get half the yardage. Put yourself in good position. Five-man rush. The Pirates pick it up, and the throw to the perimeter is incomplete. Intended for Jones and defended by Dietrich Nichols. Tough throw all the way out there, and he wasn't able to get out over the front foot. Bulls have had most success, I think, when they brought pressure and closed down both the escape lanes and played a little tighter man coverage. Forced Phillip to foot fit that in a tight window. Well, we'll see if that kicking competition paid off this week. Laumann's got it between the hash marks. It's a low try for Plowman. The distance is there, and it is good. He knocks it in from 49 yards, and East Carolina inches closer to make it 10 to 6. The ECU drive stalls out, but the Pirates, who have lost three straight, are hanging in on the road. South Florida up 10-6 over ECU. Trying to take a win here on the road. Their head coach, Scotty Montgomery, but Hawk. I'm sure he's heard this one before, huh? Only because the <laughs> truck wants it. I, Captain, I'm giving her all she's got. <laughs> it's a little it's a little disappointing that you weren't, you weren't even born, I think, before the remake started happening, let alone the original. That's a, that's a good guess uh, for many things that have gone on. Uh, that to say I was not born and you probably nailed it. Our chief engineer, Eric Poseman, we thank him for that lovely photo. Another short kick, trying to keep the ball away from Rodney Adams. So far, so good. That's the second kickoff return by Mitchell Wilcox, the tight end. That's smart strategy. Rodney can light it up in a hurry. You don't want to give one of their best players an opportunity to score against you. What did you make of the way that drive finished out there for ECU? I would have liked them to see Pape go back to the running game. They started the drive with the running game, albeit in the Wildcat. It was productive for them. They kind of get down here in the trench area and, uh, and go away from it a little bit. Marlon Mack with a big hole right through the middle. He's trying to take it all the way. Mack inside the 30, one man to beat, out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Ignite the fuse and let him go, Marlon Mack, wow. Inside zone, got a gap there, too much space for the linebacker to make a play, now they're gonna go fast. Try to put the dagger in. After he goes for 65, Mack is rewarded with another carry, but the ball is loose, and East Carolina falls on it. Travis Phillips got in there for the Pirates, and you got a question. 
Was Marlon Mack a little winded there? Well, I actually was surprised. Normally, when you do run that far, they come out and you sub in. I'm all for trying to reward the guy that got you there. They're a little far out. Another zone. Just helmet right on the ball. Comes out. Got to chin that thing high and tight. Five points of contact. Hey, it ain't over till it's over. That's why you just keep playing. That's a tough one for USF that came in with a plus seven at turnover margin. And part of the reason they're off to a four and one start. Now it's up to the defense. And with about five minutes to go before halftime, ECU 93 yards to go if they want to find the end zone. And they go to their back, James Summers on first down, who takes it from the seven forward to the 37 yard line, stopped by Nate Godwin, the safety. Hey, I got that play too. You can run zone, we can run zone. Now he hit a little farther outside. East Carolina had him spread out, unable to fold back in and make the play. Toss behind the line of scrimmage, Quay Johnson. Brings things forward for ECU and a first down for the Pirates, who are 2-3, and 0-1 and in the American Conference and trying to avoid their first four-game losing streak since the 2004 season in Conference USA when they went 2-9. and nine. Some fun stuff going on schematically there. Now they stopped that zone and then he pulled it, coming right back to it. Little tit for tat. Defense comes in to stop the zone. He flips it outside to the quick screen. Then they come back down inside. Little chess match going on between the coordinators. Now, how much decision making is happening at the mesh All point there for Nelson? All of it. Where he's the thrower, Flowers is the runner. South Florida's not pressured a lot, although they're going to bring it from the field. Second and five. It's another rush for a first down. Anthony Scott gets it. This is not what the numbers said ECU would do today, but they've tried to reverse their fortunes, and so far, so good on this drive. Yeah, now just stay patient with it down here. Don't hit, you don't have to get creative. Keep getting after it. You see some hands on the hips. It's hot on that field. Got those big guys up there. Can't They are not able to sub in. Johnson looking for blockers and lost his footing. This is also what Phil, sorry, yeah, Philip Nelson needs to know, too. Sometimes you've got certain reads, but you also got to know, look, we got hands on the hips. We're gassing this D-line. We're getting a little rhythm going. The O-line, just hand it to their guy. Hand it let him plow it up in there. Let's get a little dominance going on the line of scrimmage. On second and 10, his go-to man, Jones, again. A little confusion in the mesh in the backfield. Turn one way up. Oh, you're not there. I guess I'll throw the ball. Which can happen, or sometimes it's a total pass protection. A lot of times you tell the back, just forget about the action. Just go to your protection if you get pressure. Clearly two down territory again. Don't be afraid to run it. On the pitch, Summers. Wow, great tackle, Dietrich Nichols. Coming up to make the stop. Dietrich Nichols is a very tough run for us. I was watching that Cincinnati game with a lot of pleasure now. Typically, your corners, they're not built to tackle, but he is an aggressive player. You see him at the top of the screen. Comes off the stock block. East Carolina doing a cool little thing, pulling the guard and tackle, going to the right side, and they ran the ball to the left. Trying to get a little conflict of assignment. USF stops the clock. A minute 56 to go. East Carolina trying to keep a drive alive that could end with them taking the lead. A young broadcaster in the making coming into the game with your headset on. And it's 10 6, South Florida over East Carolina with a minute 56 to go here, second quarter. It's a fourth down and six. And the field goal unit is on Davis Plowman to try for ECU. Off the upright and no good.
competition back on. Tell you what, Hawk. Scotty Montgomery has two kickers on this roster. Davis Plowman and Jake Verity, the freshman. Everything looked pretty good right there as far as getting the kickoff. But he didn't like what they had done coming into this game. Plowman was 6 for 10. Verity was 1 for 2. They had a competition throughout the week. Whoever won it was going to get to go out there. And Plowman misses on the chance to make it a one-point game. It's tough because of the third down play really didn't get them anything positive, so they were forced into that attempt. Flowers with a toss. To the edge for Dearness Johnson. And he's got about 12 to open this two-minute drill here before halftime. Doing a really great job kicking the ball outside and blocking on the perimeter. Mitchell Wilcox has been very impressed with him out in space as a blocker. Flowers nearly stopped in the backfield. And now it takes about five defenders to bring him down coming through the middle. For a cornerback who's listed at six foot 209, even when he's out in the open field, he's hard to bring down by just one guy. Really quick, really powerful. He's packed up. He's been in the weight room. I'd like to see those old linemen at the end of that run get down there and help him out. Don't let his guy take all those shots. You've got to get in there and build a wall and lean on those guys. Pressure come in. And he gets clobbered at the end of that play. Great tackle Marcus Norman. Had trouble keeping his man in front. Got to be careful going out to the left-hand side when you're right-hand quarterback. Just get vulnerable when your arm gets up. Interesting, they had so much success with that empty package a couple drives ago, spreading it out. Haven't gone back to it. Perimeter looking to make the clock their friend. Irene McCants makes the grab there. A minute six to go. Showing a little sting on the ball. They were averaging about 13 seconds in between plays. Two drives ago, electing not to go quite as fast. Flowers up top over the middle. Beautifully placed. Inside the 15, Wilcox still working. Just his third catch of the year, but a big one to get inside the red zone. 41 yards. Big old 89 getting in that seam. Good job coming back. A little touch ball right over the backer. Mitchell, a little agility. All right, who gets it here in the red zone, Hawk? Huh? Oh, empty package. You got to think going back to Flowers here. Oh, a little fly sweep action. Johnson was in motion. Flowers dives forward to the five, and there's a flag from the far side of the play. Was everybody set? Does not appear to be the case. Pretty typical of these teams that go no huddle. Offense, five men in the backfield. Five drop penalty. Push out. You have a big gain. You try to get lined up and go fast. That's probably what led to the fumble the previous drive. Coming up at the half, previews of Virginia Tech in North Carolina, where Mitch Trubisky has been great. Florida State, Miami, and then the side of game day with Tennessee and Texas A&M in a top 10 matchup. Flowers, as much time as he needs. For Johnson, cut back, touchdown, USF. Wasn't quite the scramble drill, but they said every time Flowers likes to run, he likes to find his junkyard dog. Not looking there initially, resets his feet. Why wouldn't you get it to the best player on your team? Third receiving touchdown of the year for Johnson. And his seventh overall to make it 16 to six with 34 seconds left here before halftime. 
Well, it's not only a big score because of that huge catch and run by Wilcox, a guy who in anybody's game plan was not a factor to be a guy who's taken off downfield and rumbling for a potential score. But East Carolina won the opening toss. They took the ball. So South Florida's got momentum and also they're going to receive to start the second half. Play action. Flowers looking downfield. Dumps it off to the junkyard dog. That is a great move. Simple makes it look simple. Smart handling of the football again by Quentin Flowers. Been really impressed. He can run it. He can throw it in his decision making. People always hate that term game manager, but he's managing. He's not taking sacks and he's not turning the ball over. You can win games with that. Willie Taggart's not a real high emotion swing either way guy, but he does crack a smile when he talks about Quentin Flowers and Dearness Johnson and the relationship those two guys have. They're both juniors for him. And he says, look, no matter what we've got written down in the playbook and whatever we call, if Quentin gets in trouble, he knows the first guy he's looking for is Dearness Johnson. And yeah, lo and it. behold, you got two guys sitting right next to each other on the bench celebrating a touchdown. It takes a while, just like in any relationship, I think, sometimes for coaches and players to come together. And they, they talked about a little meeting they had to bear each other's soul and how that's helped them. And really, Willie getting out of his comfort zone because this is not his style of offense. So uh, he, he's way out of the comfort zone, but he understood this is what these guys have run a lot of them in high school what they're familiar with they're better when they go faster and so, simpler too right yeah hats off to him for really adapting to his players and adapting to his talent and that's it is one thing about scheme but it all starts with your players what they can do all right not a lot of time here 30 seconds but two timeouts for the Pirates so they can move the ball quickly that doesn't get the job done through the hands of the running back Anthony Scott Got to keep those balls in the middle below the shoulder pad. Anything up high, possibly get tipped. Now, East Carolina obviously would love to move down into position, but they need to be careful that they don't end up having something massively negative happen. Miscommunication there. Jimmy Williams had stopped his route about three yards ahead of where Nelson wanted that throw to go. He's worrying me, Mike. He's worrying me. That first ball a little high. That first ball possible tipped, and then that was a little off the mark. One thing to be down 17 to 6, but it would be is that there you go. Just get it on the ground to Scott. And USF with two timeouts to burn uses their penultimate timeout here. Not a great first half through the air for ECU. It's been quite the opposite of what you would have expected looking at the numbers. Nelson 11 of 19 for 70 yards. Meanwhile James Summers 15 carries for 88 yards. That's about 25 percent of his season workload today at 46 carries coming into this game. Meanwhile, it's been a great day passing for Quinton Flowers, 9 of 11 for 96 yards. And Marlon Mack is coming up on 100 on the ground. Tonight's 7 Eastern over on ESPN. Number one, Alabama taking on 16th ranked Arkansas with each team having its biggest test of the season. The Tide have won 17 straight. Austin Allen, the quarterback for the Hogs. And touchdowns, no picks since week one. It's streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Worth Gregory, a beautiful punt that carries all the way inside the 10 yard line. That was a booming kick taken by Dearness Johnson. Get a quick rest on the bench and goes back to grab that one over his shoulder. Game hangs in the balance. Boy, you had a couple dicey throws. Then that punt was nearly blocked. Ended up going for 65 yards. 
Got the ball coming out of the tunnel. South Florida does. Same thing. No need to get exotic. You're up 17 to 6. Let's go, South Florida! Let's go, South Florida. It's Johnson trying to break it away here on the last play of the first half. And he'll just add to his total. His fifth carry of the day. We got a lot going on in this first half. Quite a good bit of scoring. A player ejected for targeting. ECU finding more success on the ground than through the air. And the Bulls finding success with just about whatever they do. They're trying to go to five and one. And they lead 17-6 and get the ball. To start quarter number three in Tampa. Right now, it's a break. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. When learning creates leaders, ideas are ignited, focus gets sharper, and service connects generations. We commit our expertise to heal, to discover, and to drive our region forward to a brighter tomorrow. East Carolina University. Tomorrow starts here. Welcome back to the American Conference on ESPN. It's a lovely afternoon here in Tampa, Florida, and the South Florida Bulls have a 17-6 halftime lead over the visiting Pirates from East Carolina. Mike Cousins with former Colorado and Boise State head coach Dan Hawkins. Glad you're able to join us to start a great football Saturday. On the ground is where things got going, Hawk, with Marlon Mack in the early game. Big plays, hit him down the gut here, unfortunately fumbled on the next play. Averaging over eight yards per play, the Bulls are pretty special. Marlon Mack by himself, 94 yards rushing in that first half. With Kano Dillon out, backup tight end Mitchell Wilcox rumbled for 41 yards all the way down inside the 10 yard line. And then it was Dearness Johnson time. Junkyard dog. When in doubt, get it to him. He can return, catch, throw, does it all. Here, Quinn Flowers dumps it down to him. Excellent move. Best player on the Bulls team. He's got both touchdowns for USF. Meanwhile, moving it through the air, not working quite as well. So James Summers on the ground for ECU. You got to like him. He's got 92 yards rushing. Clearly, their number's way up. Unfortunately, this attempt like my golf game, just a little off the mark. And that would have made it 10-9 at that point. What jumps out to you from the stat sheet in the first half? Well, I think right there you see time of possession, how overrated that is. Normally you're not winning if you turn the ball over, but boy, that 8.7 yards per play, pretty spectacular. ECU having some trouble on third down. The Pirates, two of nine on third down. And USF gets the ball when we come back to Tampa for the start of half number two. As the preseason favorite in the East Division of the American Conference, USF, where it expects to be over a two and three team right now, out in front 17 to six, with the Bulls leading the Pirates here at the break. 
as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. I'm Mike Cousins. He is Dan Hawkins. And thanks for spending part of your day with us. ECU won the opening kick. They took the ball. Caleb Pratt kicks it short for the third time today. And it's yet another kick return by Mitchell Wilcox, the tight end who we saw there before the break with a big 41-yard catch that was pivotal in the first half. Quentin Flowers on the year, Hawk, has only completed 54% of his throws. But in the first half, 9 of 11 through the air. And the ground game, a big part of what the Bulls did as well. Has not attempted a ball down the field. Would expect that to change a little bit in this half. He's also been pounded. Been hit 15 times, knocked down nine. Hopefully he can hold up. He keeps it here, faking the throw to the edge, loses the ball, and it's still loose. There's a fight for it. Purple, gold, green, and white. USF has already lost one fumble this afternoon. The Pirates initially say they have it. At first, it looked like Wilcox, the tight end, fell on top of it for USF, and then the ball came loose again. Second down, and that's a way to catch a break for USF. Giannis Bowden with a strip. Got to chin that ball. Second turnover. Usually you don't win when you turn the ball over. These Carolinas tried to clean that up. But they're doing a nice job. Turnover margins vastly different for these teams coming into this game with USF being plus seven and ECU minus nine. Marlon Mack, better stepping his way into a first down. Both of these guys, when I'm talking about Flowers and Mack, they can make you miss in a phone booth. Boy, these guys got a lot of shutter and shimmy and make a lot of guys miss in a short area. That was a terrific run. Didn't go for a lot of yards, but boy. Now looking agility. deep. As predicted, trying to send it downfield for Marquez Valdez Scantling. Got to give Marquez a chance. Got one on one coverage out there. Big tall receiver, give him an opportunity to go get that ball. TJ Wiest is the passing game coordinator for USF, and he praised among the many areas for Quinton Flowers his ability to accurately throw the deep ball. Doesn't connect there on first down. So it's second and 10 at their own 46. Aldi Scantling at six foot five. Got to give him an opportunity when he gets one on one coverage. The change of the line to get Rodney Adams into the slot. That was to give him some, some protection there for a screen pass as he shakes his way forward across the 50. Good job there by Wilcox, the tight end, to say, hey, big man. Get over here. <laughs> well, yeah, and that should have been a buzz key for East Carolina. No, hey, this guy's switching spots. I'm probably not going to be the guy on the bubble screen. Flowers for Mack on the outside, stretching forward. An ankle tackle stops him short of the first down marker. They've run that play a couple times. The junkyard dog scored on it earlier. It's very difficult. They're so quick and so fast. They put a move on to get down the sideline or bust it up inside. You got to make an open field tackle. So Quentin Flowers stays out there maybe an extra 10 seconds. What is the coaching conversation like where they're saying, I want to go for it, and then the poll that wins to say we're going to play? Hey, Mike, in my mind, that decision's made on third down. And you say, if we get it at half of it, we're going with this play. So you should know immediately when that play happens, I don't like the spot. Let's go ahead and punt. Or, yeah, we're going ahead with the offense. There shouldn't be a lot of thinking going on. They end up punting on fourth and three. And a fair catch by Quay Johnson. ECU gets the stop. Now, can they score? After forcing a punt, the East Carolina Pirates are on offense. Trying to get their first conference win of the year. 0-1 after a loss against UCF last week. It's the fifth start inside their own 20 today out of their first six drives. Quarterback keeper in a short gain for the senior Philip Nelson, the former Minnesota Golden Gopher. 
The exchange coming out of the tunnel after halftime is always critical for the rest of the game. So credit the Pirates for getting a stop there on defense. And as you mentioned, it unfortunately had to drive a lot of field to try to get into score position. Have been successful for the most part, but unable to get in the end zone. On a naked rollout, pass incomplete intended for Jimmy Williams. Now third and nine. Oh, Hawk, the, the self-imposed arm has not been there on special teams. It hasn't been there with turnovers. Where has the offense stalled other than third down where they've been two of nine? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the, that's the reason. And most of those have been negative plays. Big time blitz. The throw was past the marker. Intended again for Jimmy Williams. Incomplete. And they get the ball back, and now the defense is thinking, we didn't even get a chance to get watered yet. Diedrich Nichols doing a great job at corner. Physical presence, playing tough man coverage. He was squatted in that flat before. I think he wanted that interception. Now you need one of those booming punts again by Gregory. Try to flip the field over a little bit. Look out for Dearness Johnson. Who's back to return? Somewhat of a positive bounce, at least takes it across the 50. Our week five Monday night football matchup is in the NFC South. It's Jameis Winston leading the Buccaneers against Luke Keekley and the Panthers in Charlotte, 8:15 Eastern on ESPN. And our coverage starts with Monday night countdown served by Applebee's at six. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Let's play, uh, Hawk, the how many jelly beans are in the jar game. How many pounds do you think that ship weighs? Well, you already gave it away because you know all those <laughs> details, but I'm trying to break that thing out of here and get it out on the bay later. 86,000. It's 103 feet. So at least if you got that, you can say, hey, you want to take a ride on this 103-foot boat? The Flowers and Mac Show. It's a short run and a long throw on a flag. Got a hold inside. Holding offense number 75. Ten yard penalty. First down. He's been pounded a few times. First half got hit 15 times, knocked down nine. You can see he's not a slider. This guy's going to be physical. Going to put his pads in there. Of course, the last drive, he ended up fumbling it, which they got it back. You wonder how much that weighs into it, and you wonder how much punishment his body can take. Mack going east-west, and he turns it into a north-south run. How about that, just slithering through there and getting the job done? Terrific, terrific balance, vision, great awareness in space. The great Gil Brandt always talked about accelerating in the hole, and he can do it. Flowers accelerates, picks up a first down. Nine yards there. I think that really gets Quentin Flowers' blood going. I really think it's part of who he is. Uh, it's hard to restrict that. I think that gets him excited, and I think it gets his team excited. They take the handoff. He looks downfield, doesn't like what he sees, and just finds Mack in the flat. Now he is shaking his hand. I'm talking Quinn Flowers here. He's shaking his hand a little bit. I think it's his left thumb, not his throwing thumb, thankfully, but I think he's feeling those effects a little bit of running the ball. That's bothered him a lot. And that last hit that he took that we saw at the end of that uh, montage of plays there, he got hit with a helmet coming in. That forced that, uh, forced that fumble. Second catch of the day, and a hard hit does not deter Mitchell Wilcox, who's doubled his reception total on the year this afternoon. There is an injured player down for ECU, and it's the free safety, Trayvon Simmons, the junior from Marietta, Georgia. Hope he's okay. Came in here with his head first. Right. Ooh. Hopefully he's okay. Looks like he's rolling over, gonna be all right. 
Good for him. And he brings himself back upright here before a third and two. Glad to see that. Yeah. All you young football players out there, keep your head out of it and keep your face up. Can't put your head down. Keep your face up. Tough. Might have actually got a stinger on the shoulder there a little bit. Sometimes when your head gets off to the side, a little stinger in the shoulder. What does that feel like? It feels like somebody takes an ice pick and jabs it into your shoulder, literally. <laughs> it I, is I regret that. I asked the question. It hurts. Stri it hurts bad. Strike the statement from the record. Third and two for USL. Simple toss for Mack toward the boundary. He's got another first down. He's led the American in rushing each of the last two years, and he's a leading rusher on both sides today. They've done a nice job pulling that backside guard, and they run a play where Flowers can run it up inside, and it looks like it's going to be the same read, then they kick it outside to Mack. They split those three wide receivers outside to the edge. It's the catch for Rodney Adams with some extra speed to go. Now inside the red zone. Rodney's pretty excited now. He is an electric playmaker and has not touched the ball much this game, so I'm sure he's elated. They tried to pump that and get a shot down the field, and then he checked it back down to Rodney. There's a 17-yard pickup there. It shows you why Flowers averages 17 yards of completion. He fakes the give, keeps it. Now with space, does he have enough speed? Not quite enough to get the touchdown. Put that shoulder down, little power run. This is not your grandmother's quarterback. This guy could play tailback. Probably will at the next level. That's on his throwing shoulder, too. Marl Mack quickly brought down. And the helmet comes off for Deion Pratt, I believe. This is the second time that's happened to an ECU defender this afternoon. So I'll have to come off the field for one play. Second time, that's a lot of hair there. You can get that bound up. A lot of hair underneath that hat. It's third down and one. They can still pick up a first down here. And plenty of options for USF. That wide bunch looking into the boundary. Flowers comes up short of the goal line, but he does have enough to make it first and goal. At about the two. Easy for me up here. I thought he should have put his foot in the ground. It just got vertical. He tried to duck it back outside. He should have kept it on the play before, and I think he predetermined it there. Mack fighting and gets his way in. Touchdown, USF. Seventh touchdown of the year for Mack, and he makes it a 17-point difference between USF and ECU. Still with only one real deep attempt in the pass game. Everything really has been under 10 yards, and then Flowers get involved in the running game. Emilio Nadelman's extra point, 24 to six. USF in control, 744 left in the third. USF leads ECU 24-6, 744 left here in the third quarter. Things looking good for Willie Taggart and company who has taken, in many ways, Quinton Flowers under his wing. Flowers leading this team to, they hope, a 5-1 and one start to the season. Right now, their only loss against Florida State. And it's been Flowers and Mack who have powered this offense today. Great job through the air, and both of them on the ground have been dominant. Great to see... Uh 
Quentin Flowers with that kind of relationship with uh, Willie Taggart. I think your coach has got to have that kind of a, there's got to be a special relationship between that quarterback. There's got to be a mentor student relationship that's very positive. I and mean, that quarterback spots, it's volatile. You, you, you've got to be able to trust your play caller and your head coach. USF today already well over the 200 yard rushing mark. Marlon Mack on just 13 carries has 118. This will be 11 straight games now where they've gone over 200 yards on the ground. That's the longest active streak in the country. Trailed only by New Mexico, which eclipsed 300 last night in a loss at home against Boise State. Philip Nelson. Nowhere to go with it. Esther by Bruce Hector, one of the important defensive tackles for USF. Trying to move the pocket, change up the protection, give Philip Nelson a little bit more time and space to throw the football. Reduces the throwing lanes, but helps you take a few less shots. Ball is dropped by Anthony Scott. We're down at 11 coming up. Coach, during the break, we were talking about the explosive offense for ECU, how they throw for almost 400 yards a game, which is fourth in the country. They haven't been able to do that today. What is USF doing with its secondary that's put them away from them? They're playing quarters, which is basically four deep. So you've got four deep over the top. You're not giving them any chance to throw the ball vertically. South Florida's been able to get home, get to the quarterback. They're going to rush three. Uh, actually, bring pressure, bring them down. They're just four, but they get a shot. And Zay Jones makes the catch and brings up a first down. But Augie Sanchez got through the middle unblocked. That's why you see Nelson down. Yeah, you got two guys down back there, and Philip Nelson is not good. Now, he had to leave the game because of concussion issues last week. Did not practice a couple days through later in the week. Able to get the ball out there to Zay. Courageous throw, but here's a guy that's got popped two weeks in a row. Justin Sandifer, offensive lineman, is also the player down there. And this was third quarter last week against UCF. A play that he got hit by UCF's Mark Rucker, knocked him out of the game. He did not practice early in the week. And then yesterday and Thursday went through walkthrough kind of stuff. They said he went through their concussion protocol and was okay. And he takes two shots here. Hard ones. To Mike Love and Augie Sanchez. It was a legal pop. Got him, got him on the shoulder pad there, but. It's tough. It, I, I, Quentin Flowers is, has had a lot of hits on him today as well. Sandifer back to his feet, the junior from Greenwood, Mississippi. Listed as their backup left tackle. So with Nelson coming out of the game, this brings Gardner Minshew back into the fold. The sophomore from Brandon, Mississippi, a national champion at Northwest Mississippi Community College last year. They wanted to redshirt him this year. Had to put him into action last week. He was 12 for 27 in the loss against UCF. One touchdown. That was the first passing through, but also two interceptions. So two weeks in a row, the sophomore is thrust into action. That was a wobbler intended for Jimmy Williams. Not sure if that ball got a little bit tipped or just came out of his hand funny. Pretty good protection, had an opportunity to step up. If the Bulls continue to play quarters coverage and play four over the top, there'll be room underneath. Now it looks like they're wanting to pressure and play man on this snap. Mincher goes outside, Jones, the top target. Carries a couple of defenders with him right toward the sticks. It'll be close. Zay Jones, very electric player. Very smooth. Watch him in warm-ups. I really like him. Really nice hands. Get in and out of his breaks. Good acceleration. Good top-end speed. First down and 10 for the Pirates. Minshew hands it off for Anthony Scott. Maybe one yard there. It is important to note is 
The Pirates played a lot of that game last week that they lost against UCF with Minshew in the game. And Tony Peterson, first year offensive coordinator who comes over from Louisiana, Texas, he's not going to call the game any differently, whether it's Nelson there or here, number five, Minshew. A little bit of confusion on the lineup here at the bottom of the screen and the trips. I like the fact that they try to run the ball the last down and be patient with it. And trying to go deep, it was blown coverage. DeAndre Ferrier is down at the one yard line. He was wide open for 46 yards. A little crossing around, a little conf confusion in the back end. Cross it from the inside out, a little switch route. See there are two guys on the inside route. Come on, Ferry, you gotta score that. You can't go down right there. You gotta get that thing in the house. From the one, Jones reaches across and scores ECU's first touchdown of the day. What an answer. Credit Gardner Minshew for coming right in off the bench. Now baseball, you don't get a lot of warm-up pitches. Got to be ready to go. Always one hit away. Excellent answer. Good patience with the running game in there. And it's Davis Plowman, the senior for the extra point. And it is good. 24 to 13, new quarterback. And it opens up the offense for ECU Hawk. There was that vertical play. We thought it'd come with Phillip, but Minshew comes in and hits Farrier, and the Pirates are right back in it. Call him the man with the green thumb and perhaps the golden arm, Gardner Minshew, helping to lead a touchdown drive for ECU. Their first touchdown of the day comes here. Midway through the third quarter, Minshew comes in, replacing Nelson, who was knocked out of the game last week with a blow to the head, knocked out of the game this week after a hit by two defenders. And let's see where Caleb Pratt hits this kickoff. It's another short one. Another short return. I'm Mitchell Wilcox. He has, you know, <laughs> Kano, he is loving this. Kano Dillon is out today, starting tight end. He's at two catches today, doubling his season total. He's got four kickoff returns, special teams player of the week. Maybe he'll be on Sports Center tonight after Washington State and Stanford with Bucci and Anderson. They've got all the highlights and breakdowns of the NL Division Series games, short kickoffs in college football, the NBA preseason, NFL news, and a UFC 204 update. It's after college football on ESPN. There's a big drive here for USF. After a score, the first down carry is Dearness Johnson's to run with. To see if they can distance themselves from East Carolina. See if the Pirates crowd the line of scrimmage. Hey, try to force South Florida to hit one of those deep shots because you know, particularly in this formation, you've got a running back playing quarterback. Flowers for the junkyard dog, Johnson. Gotten to the point now where the Pirates have seen that formation quite a few times this afternoon. They adjusted well there. But it's still tough because you've got to get two guys basically on the sideline to defend that. Looks like you got a lower body injury. And Giannis Bowden, the outside linebacker for ECU, is the player who slowly went down to the turf after being in the vicinity of that tackle there on Johnson. Both of these defenses playing a lot of snaps with these two these two offenses going fast. Old school football plays wise the game be getting over about now but now you have teams creep into the 80s regularly on the amount of snaps you have in a game and it wears on you. The South Florida offensive staff lamented the fact that they only average 
about six yards a drive. We haven't seen that explosive <laughs> level of play today from them despite their 24 points. But that's problematic for your defense when you're playing in the heat. Yeah, and it's brutal and it wears on you. And that's why uh, it's great to throw the, it's great to throw the football and it's ex exciting. You have to be balanced. But boy, you, boy, a running game, a good running game really wears on people. It's physical. It's demanding. It's a grind. Just two down linemen. It's a six man rush. You're on a crucial play and the catch is made by Marquez Valdez Skinling to get the first down third and five and they move the chains. Pirates challenge him with a blitz. Flowers stepped up and threw a strike just past the chains. Valdez going down and making a great catch for the first down. Pressure look again. Flowers over the middle. And I think that ball touched the turf. Incomplete. That took a Rube Goldberg machine's worth of bounces to get to the ground, but just hit the turf before it was grabbed. Could you explain to the audience what Rube Goldberg is? <laughs> Unbelievable how this thing pinballed around. You've got to be careful throwing it down the middle like that. And it was on the back of Deshaun Benton, but I believe right before it's picked up by Devin Sutton is where it hits the ground. They get the next snap off, and away they go. Wow. Kind of surprising they didn't buzz it and take a look at that a little bit more. Especially given, you know, you hear the term competitive advantage, how important that might have been. You hear that a lot more than Rube Goldberg, that's for sure. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Third and three. Has tipped the line of scrimmage and flies out of bounds. Mike Myers, the junior from South Carolina, getting the hand up. Nice job by Myers. You get those those D linemen, they get their hands up right away and take away the throwing lane because in that quick strike offense, you can't get to the quarterback anyway. All right, backup quarterback in the game. Something to keep in mind as USF goes for it on fourth down it's ECU playing with the backup quarterback I should say so maybe a little bit more confidence to go for it here on fourth down well I don't know I think it's just the nature of the field position you got to feel good about the play that you're calling you got two running backs in the game they take the go. pitch and it's flowers forward first down bulls that's the play they ran a couple times before they kicked it out so he's got the option they pull the backside guard up inside Take a look at the defensive end. He plays outside. Quarterback can keep it inside. Different type of a read play. So you've got two 100-yard rushers now for USF. Mac 118, Flowers 102. There's that deep look. Too high for Valdez Skitlin. So now we can count on our fingers two times they've tried to go deep today and complete on both Michael get the ball up and give your guy a chance to go get it on the outside just make a jump ball he's six five that's a good idea yeah it doesn't have to be perfect just give him an opportunity to go get it all he's got to do is rebound it both times they've tried to go deep it's been a first down so they still leave themselves room to work with flowers throws on the run Rodney Adams is tossed out of bounds. A flag is tossed onto the field of play. Legal block in the back. Offense number 89. Oh, Mitchell Wilcox's perfect day now has a slight blemish. Second one, though. It is. Second it's one. His second penalty. Come on, Mitch. Look at that. Two catches, 52. Just take the averages when they put those stats together. He came in with two catches for 73 yards, so it's four for, what, 125 and four kick returns? He's now the new junkyard dog for the Bulls. <laughs> USF, where no offensive coordinator dares roam voluntarily behind the chains. Second and 18. Big time setup for a run for Flowers, but not a lot of room to the short side of the field. And there's another penalty flag derailing this drive. Holding offense, 
number 74. Now as our crack Bring stats and spotting crew up here told us the drive before they came behind the chains. Once on first and 20, another time on second 13. Now we're going to see if you could really stretch it a little bit farther. Second and 28. No Saturday is complete without the computations of Joe Sullivan and Tim Swartz up here in the booth with us. And Rube Goldberg. Right. <laughs> and an 86,000 pound pirate ship. It's Adams. He's got great speed. He's still on his feet forward progress gets him to the 46 after the tackle comes back at the 50 yard line hard to take down in these plays Mike I think sometimes you think about the overall yardage to me you need to throw it for five and hope you can run for five and keep working that formula down the down the field you don't have to get it all in big chunks and particularly for this team that has skilled people that can run after the catch all you got to do is get them the ball in space now it's third and 19 first down would get them to the 27 yard line. Flowers has all the time he needs, but not all the yardage he needs. Just past the original line of scrimmage. That's a pickup of 10. Bronson makes the catch as we're down to a minute 20 here in the third quarter. You got about fourth and nine. This is not out of rhythm. Typically, once you get past about 10 yards, you're out of rhythm in terms of your passing game. You got to do something a little extra. They're going to elect to field. No, it's Play the field punter. position. Yep. Yeah, the punter, Jonathan Hernandez, who saunters onto the field. Now, one of the more underutilized, I, I just think the whole red zone punting thing is extremely critical. We've seen what field position being backed up has done to East Carolina. Now, he's landed one inside the red zone today, 14 of them on the season. And we'll have to check the spot as to where this one lands. the 23-yard line moving up and up like the yodeling game on the Price is Right. A net of 13 yards there. Coming up later tonight, the Sunshine State Showdown. Number 23, Florida State, and undefeated 10th-ranked Miami, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Brad Kaya has been great for Miami against FSU. They've won the last six in this matchup. It can also be seen streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Gardner Minshew, the backup quarterback, rolls out a long heave as out of bounds. We are quite fortunate to be here in the state of Florida where the weather is pristine. However, others not quite as much, not only in Florida, but also up the East Coast. Several games of the FBS level affected. ODU with a win over UMass. LSU and Florida postponed for now. Likely, if you read into it, probably never going to happen. As well as some other games as well. To the outside, there's Summers. And, you know, the, that game is going on between Florida State and Miami. But there are so many other citizens in the state of Florida that need critical police resources. The governor, Rick Scott, said yesterday, look, the game can go on. We're just not going to send any state troopers down there. There are plenty of local authorities to take control. But it's good to see that the resources are being directed where they're needed most. Yeah, thoughts and prayers for everybody affected over on the East Coast. The, the rains and winds kind of getting into that East Carolina area later tonight. Big pickup there on third down. Zay Jones comes up with his 10th catch of the day. FBS's leader in receptions per game keeps the chains moving with a 20 yard pickup. East Carolina needs him and some momentum with 15 minutes to play in Tampa. Twenty four thirteen USF over ECU quarterback situation right now for ECU Philip Nelson another big hit in back to back weeks has been knocked out of the game Gardner Minshew has come in just his second FBS game the junior college transfer led them to a scoring drive on his first try and here 
Trying to make it a one score game. But they're going to be going even further backwards. With two flags down in the area of holding. Holding offense. Number 73. 10-yard penalty. Big D and Sanat, number 10, trying to bowl his way in there. Had to tackle him to keep him from getting the quarterback. A 6 one 3 0 5 and the penalty was on Christian Mattel, who grew up in New Bern, North Carolina, a native of, or his family is of Samoan descent. And a hard charge there to keep Sanat out of the pocket. South Florida still pretty content to play zone behind it, keep things in front. Jones with catch number 11 has not hit the 100 yard mark just yet. It's 11 catches for 83 yards. 22 catches for him in week three against South Carolina. ECU is trying to snap a three game losing streak. They started off 2-0. Took down NC State at home. Have not won since. Big throw to the sideline. Jones stretching forward. Doesn't have enough, but it makes it third and about one, maybe two. There you go, Gardner. Good throw right on the sideline. Isaiah over there up against a very pressure-oriented corner. Doing a nice job coming back to the ball. Most certainly four down territory. Quick toss, Jones. First down ECU as Minshew keeps the drive going. And the official word from the East Carolina Sports Information Department is that Philip Nelson is not expected to return to the game. Yeah, that's too bad. That's tough. Two weeks in a row. Once you get one concussion, it takes half the amount to cause twice as much damage the next time around. Minshew on the run, and he's got another first down. Quay Johnson, their slot receiver, makes the catch. How about Minshew coming in here? There's Nelson looking on. Rooting on his team. Minshew doing a nice job. They're opening it up. They were not able to throw the ball much in the first half. Certainly find some pockets. Doing a good job moving the pocket in the protection and getting the ball out. 15 yard pickup. One of the longer players today for the Pirates. From the 26. And just thrown behind Jones, man. He laid out for a one-handed catch last week against UCF. He is capable of the spectacular, but perhaps not the miraculous. Good, good crossing route combination. Gardner, unfortunately, just a little bit behind. Normally, when you get a bunched up look like they had before, you got to look for people spreading out and crossing, and they sure did that last time. Second and 10. There was contact there, and the ball is tipped and caught by DeAndre Ferrier. Dual screen by the Pirates. Read well by the Bulls, tried to throw it out left, nothing happening. Coming back to the quick screen, back over on the right. As you mentioned, ball gets tipped. Ferrier's kind of the big play spark plug today for the Pirates. Right place, right time. Uh. Scott, I think, got tripped up by Minshew. Would that be a Rube Goldberg play, the previous one? Would that be in that playbook? Maybe, just one? maybe two or more bounces. Only and one, then not we good. get into that category. Okay. Trying to get that clarified. You got to file it under the you know it when you see it definition. Ah. <laughs> Minshew is looking all the way. And only one guy, and he threw it a little bit too hard there. Well, I think he had to. I don't think he had a choice. You got to have some strong hands to come down with that ball. Good thing it wasn't a spear; it would have stuck him. You got to, you got to make a play there. All right, third and ten. 
Five wide for ECU. Be smart with the football. It's okay to kick a field goal down here. To the back corner of the end zone and too tall for everybody. Yeah, good decision by Gardner. They have missed one field goal today. That looms large here. Let's say it's 16-24. You can make it 19-24, but a field goal is not the end of the world here because to make it 24-16 is still a one-score game. Got it the Pirates on the road. Starting quarterback goes out. They're rallying. This try from 31 yards is good. And still plenty of time left on the clock. Gardner Minshew has been exactly what the Pirates needed. He gets them more points. They're down eight. Welcome back to a great day in the American Conference on ESPN. Tampa, Florida, Raymond James Stadium. The USF Bulls 24 and the East Carolina Pirates 16. Along with Dan Hawkins, Mike Cousins, and the preseason favorites sit atop their divisions right now. Number six, Houston in the West. The unanimous preseason choice there at 5-0. And USF, the best in the East, 4-1 and 1-0 and and in conference play with a win on the road at Cincinnati last week. Buckle up. We got a ball game. Pirates back in it. Yet to see really a vertical pass play by the Bulls. Done a nice job running. We'll see if they can open up a can of explosion in this series. All right, let's uh, keep an eye on backup tight end Mitchell Wilcox. Uh -oh. You know, that's the first time that sentence has ever been said. Let's also keep an eye on a potential upset of Kansas over TCU. We've got lots of never before but said sentences. Four turnovers today by TCU quarterback Kenny Hill. That's a career high for him. Kansas came into this game as a 30-point underdog, and they've got the potential here to make an upset win over TCU. Ryan Willis doing his best Quinted Flowers, taking off. Look out, Jayhawks. Potential for their second win of the year. How awesome is college football? You cannot beat it. And we're only in our first window today of some great Saturday games later on tonight. It's Miami and Florida State. And then you, of course, got Alabama, Arkansas. Home is wherever. I'm with Ann Hawkins on a college football Saturday. And your app. <laughs> and watch ESPN. There's a flag. Run by the referee, Todd LaPenta, on the run by Flowers. Holding offense number 73 10 yard penalty second down left guard jeremy hall the guilty party really really have struggled the last few drives with the penalties the bulls have and is certainly part of what's killed their momentum you can't get bored in football games you got to keep playing that clearly the pirates disregarded the fact that they lost their starting quarterback the fact that they're behind Still battling the Bulls have got to learn to throw a rock on the gas pedal and keep going. Following their eighth penalty of the day, USF keeps it on the ground on second and 16. It's a short game, so third and 13 here. You've got to imagine this is a pretty energized Pirates defense. Would I be captain obvious and say it's the play of the game, which it really is right now, because they're not only facing a third and 13, they're back in their own territory, so assuming they punt, East Carolina has a chance to get some field position. So extremely critical. And clearly, if you're the Bulls, you cannot turn the ball over. Mack jogging out of the backfield. The ball was loose and ruled an incomplete pass. 
That was a very molasses-like drive there by the Bulls. Molasses. Scotty Montgomery, he kind of wanted to fumble on that. All right, here we go. Expect good field, good field position for the Pirates. Certainly have got hot the last two drives. Jonathan Hernandez for Quay Johnson from the 24. Through the forward wave, another great kick by Hernandez. 53 yards. Don't look, but it's a one score game here at Tampa. Well, Scotty Montgomery's team is on the road. They are two and three. They are assuredly the underdog in this game. How about week two against an ACC team at home, NC State. This is the second game of his head coaching career, and ECU was a winner at Dowdy Ficklin, 33-30. You gotta be pumped up for that. Throw up the crossbones for the Pirates. Unfortunately, they haven't won since. They are two and three, and trying to avoid a four-game losing streak. Here this afternoon, Zay Jones continues his busy afternoon as he makes his 14th catch of the day. He's over 100 yards on the day. Not close to his season high, though. He had 22 catches in a game earlier this season against South Carolina. So there can certainly be more of where that came from. Gardner Minshew, you can't say enough about the job he's done coming in in relief really great job taking care of the football being accurate Anthony Scott gets the carry there and you know who we've seen less of Hawk as the game has gone on certainly Philip Nelson who's not expected to return for ECU but also James Summers who got a heavy dose of carries in the first half yeah good chance he's dinged as well this empty package has been good normally Third and two, you're thinking, yeah, it might be a running down. South Florida looks like they're content to play zone and rush four. They do. The Pirates throw across the middle. And Jones is there once again to help get a first down. You cannot stop number seven. You need to find him. If Bill Belichick was here, he'd walk somebody out, some linebacker, and jam the heck out of that guy and let somebody else cover him on the back end. Minshew throwing to the outside. And Dietrich Nichols, who has been the defensive MVP today for USF, was right on top of it. So you look at what Nelson did in his time in the game, the starting quarterback for ECU, 12 of 23, 88 yards. Minshew has already come in and lit it up, 13 of 19 for a buck 48 and a touchdown. South Florida has not changed up the look much on defense. All great penetration. Right through there to get the tackle. Mike Love with a big play. 6'4", 266 pounds. These guys will penetrate, shoot gaps. Now again, it's third and about 13. If you can throw the ball short for five and run for another five, you're in great shape to be down there at fourth and four and still keep the drive moving. Up top, catch is made by Ferrier. And he keeps it going all the way down to the 26-yard line. Whoo! We got a ball game. 28 more yards. What a strike. Great job in the seam. Barrier climbing over the top of the backer, hanging right in the seam, throwing it in that soft spot. Here's your man. Back to James Summers. Here he came. Had to go for a little respite. Might be time for the Bulls, a little heat. Try to bring a little pressure, cause a negative play. Summers tumbling to the three-yard line. 
He is six foot three. He is 218 pounds. And he's carried the Pirates on his back inside the five. Keep going, get lined up. Bulls are having a hard time. Summers through the middle, and he's in, standing up. Touchdown ECU, and the Pirates are at two-point try away from tying this game. What an awesome response by the Pirates. Got to love a club's up against adversity and just answers. Scotty's upset that there was a little bit of confusion when they knew they were going for two. And there's still a lot of confusion out there among the offensive players. Not sure why it took them so long to start the play clock. But it works to the Pirates' benefit yeah. because they still got 16 seconds. One on one at the top of the screen if you like it. Probably get some crossing around in the bunch down here at the bottom. Timeout USF. How about it? ECU was down at the half. USF received the ball. They were down, but they were not out. Summers scores and a chance to tie when we return. Two-point game, ECU can tie it here after scoring a touchdown. Okay. Zay Jones up the top, one-on-one. -on -one. We got a three-receiver route down here. Looks like they've come back to it. Little bunch, watch for crossers. Minchu off the back foot. It's caught, but it's out of bounds. Anthony Scott, the running back, caught it but he was well outside the end zone when he did. Defended well, a little pressure off the edge. Forced Minshew to loft it up there. I was surprised that East Carolina came back with the exact same formation. Typically for me, you're going for two and you come out and the defense calls timeout. I'm going to try to get in a different formation, give you a different look, not let you get lined up right. And they went away from Jones. All the way back, third and 13. Minshew throwing it in the seam. Strike, good job covering it up. Here comes Summers back into the game. Not forgetting the running game, tough physical running. Going fast against the Bulls defense. Looky, looky, Pirates right back in. What a character answer by that club. So still a two-point lead for USF. Summers, 18 for a buck 44. And on that drive, three straight plays going for 26 yards. The Pirates kick it away. And with 6.58 in, in the fourth quarter, it'll be a first and 10 at the 25 for USF. Still lots more exciting action coming your way. 7 Eastern on ESPN. Number one, Alabama taking on number 16, Arkansas. The tied with the nation's longest winning streak since they lost to Ole Miss last year. 17 straight. Austin Allen has been great at quarterback for the Razorbacks since week one. Ten touchdowns, no picks. The change at quarterback has been a positive one. For ECU as well, with Nelson out due to injury and Minshew being a spark for the Pirates. Marlon Mack running on first down. It was that last drive for USF where they looked a little sluggish. They had a penalty, they had an incomplete pass, and really didn't do much to advance their cause here. Their cause right now, dwindling the clock. They're just not moving very fast, Mike. I mean, they, they had such tempo, they're going about 13 seconds between plays. They've really slowed down. Mack for a first down, grabbed by Giannis Bowden. And th this is the argument a little bit. Sometimes people go, well, I don't understand why they're not milking the clock. You're ahead. Well, sometimes it just kills your whole momentum. If, you're, if your identity is going fast and that's who you are, Sometimes when you slow up too much, I think it just kills all the things you've built up. It's only a three-man rush. Rodney Adams breaks away. There's the long.
on strike, 62 yards, Flowers to Adams. Run into the post route, down the middle, play action, which you have to honor. Rodney. Coach, just give me the rock. Just give me the rock. East Carolina bringing a little more pressure on that drive. Nine point ball game. Eight men back on defense. Rodney Adams outran them all. Just flip the old desk calendar back one year, and you'll find Rodney Adams played a pretty big part in last year's USF ECU game. This catch and subsequent run helped seal things. 67 yards as USF won 22-17 against ECU. Seven targets, seven receptions, and 113 yards today from the senior in nearby St. Petersburg. Most of that coming here late in the game as well. Emilio Nailman's kickoff taken by Chris Love at about the eight yard line. So now the clock is against ECU. That was a real short drive. Just three plays as, Ad as Adams got between the safeties. Roddy just splitting the safeties, little pressure man from the Pirates. Allowed him to get across the field. Good play calling, good timing, and great job seeking out that guy. Get the ball to your playmakers, and he is certainly one on the edge. Plenty of time for the Pirates. Be patient. Lots of time here. Just important we be productive on this drive and then worry about the next score after that. Minshew and East Carolina down by nine. Trying to go through the middle, and he lost a yard. Bruce Hector takes him to the turf. Now, he does need to be kind of smart in these situations. Unless it's just wide open and you're going to run fine, but you're better off throwing that thing out of bounds, stopping the clock. Then it's second and 10 rather than second and 12. And clock running. Jones with a pickup right toward the marker. The offense has opened up a little bit since Nelson, the starting quarterback, left the game for ECU. If you're joining late, Philip Nelson took a big hit earlier in the game, and Minshew just his second FBS game. Oh, what a stop! Coming in here. What a stop. Trying to go to east and west. Get it out to Summers, but great tackling and pursued by the Bulls. Now you're almost, that's tough. It was third and one. Again, it's easy, easy, easy from the booth, but you think and they had great success running zone up inside on the last drive. Now they back up a yard and got to get it on fourth and two. He throws. Forward progress. Enough there for Jimmy Williams to get the much-needed first down. Can he play by Mitchu? Forced up into the pocket, keeping his eyes up, not panicking, looking for his check down route. Still just a four-man rush. As Minshew went into his slide and got about two yards there. Kind of a rugged slide. To work on that. Looks like he got a little banged up. His left arm is hurting. ECU takes the timeout with four minutes to go. His left arm is hurting. He's not feeling too good.
It's not a comfortable score, and it's certainly not a comfortable look for Gardner Minshew as he comes back after the timeout. Looked like he jammed that left shoulder in. It was hanging pretty loose as he went over there. He's got some sort of a brace on the left shoulder, so that's an existing injury. Still plenty of time. Just worry about this drive and the next play being productive on this drive. The rest will take care of itself. Second down throw for Jones. Nicely positioned. He's at the sideline for about five. He's had a really good battle over there up in the boundary against Dietrich Nichols. South Florida pretty content to keep things in front. Then lots of zone. Oh, what a hole shot. Jones went up to get it, but he started, I believe, out of bounds, and he did. You see the official on the back side of that play, no hat on to signify that Jones had stepped out of bounds, even if his foot did come down inbounds, although it didn't. Ooh, spectacular play. This shows you the athletic ability that runs in his family. His dad, Robert, a linebacker, a three-time Super Bowl champ in Dallas. Once again, fourth down. And another ECU timeout. Well, if we got two timeouts left, no better time to use one than right here, because if they don't get it, pretty much flush their chances of coming back and winning this game. Yeah, they like the isolation with Zay Jones over here. Now I think if they play a safety over the top over Zay, you're trying to work that three receiver combination. If they decide to cheat the boundary saver safety over and you got one on one, you need to go back to seven and give your playmaker a chance to get it done for you. This college football season stream every game live on the ESPN app and on watch ESPN. Download the app today. So they're going to go to Peter Voss, the replay official. Hawk, as I mentioned, the first time we watched that uh, replay, you'll see the official, and he has no hat on. And that's to say that Zay Jones had stepped out of bounds and did not reestablish himself. That's what the ruling was on the field. And then his left foot comes down, and he's never in bounds. About right. Yeah, his right foot never does get to the ground. You think the thought process here from ECU is, you know what, we might as well give it a shot and see what happens, down by nine? Oh, yeah. You got to go right here, no question. Yeah, that foot did not, his right foot did not quite get on the ground. Now, just as another point of fun minutiae in the rule book, Zay Jones could have gone out of bounds, come back in, and legally made a catch yeah. had he been knocked out of bounds by the force of Dietrich Nichols or any of the other defenders. However, the call on the field was, which you would need indisputable video evidence to overturn, he never reestablished himself back in bounds. That would be the key, reestablished. Because he could come back in and go get it if he reestablished. But that didn't appear to be the case, and you imagine this replay will not last all that much longer. Gives the Pirates a little longer to discuss what they want to do on fourth down. To me, they've had more success pushing the ball down the seams in the middle. Here you go. I just don't think the, the right foot comes close to getting in, but it never quite touches. And the left foot does land out of bounds. They get a fourth and four coming up as it stands now, which we imagine it will from their own 43 yard line. Zay Jones is an obvious target. What's the best way to go about getting him the ball if that's what they wanted to do? Well, I think again, if the boundary safety is cheated to the field, assuming he's on this side into the boundary, after you go with the, the ruling on the field is confirmed, the receiver caught the ball out of bounds. It is an incomplete pass. So you're saying the safety there? 
If the boundary safety, assuming he's lined up down to the bottom of our screen here. Oh, that's a huge break. Huge break there. So it looks like they're coming back. Uh, they're going to go with a two by two formation, though. Now, the last time they were in this, they had crossing routes by the two inside receivers. Probably putting put a receiver inside of Zay Jones so they can't double him. And the throw to the inside, Harris picked off. That'll just about seal it. Nigel Harris down the sidelines for the Bulls. He's inside the 20. And ECU comes up short on fourth down. The Bulls defense takes it away and can seal the game. Tried to empty out. Bring Summers in motion to the field. Get a little bit of relief underneath. You could tell he was going to Zay the whole way. Ball just gets popped out. Great hands. Good coverage. That was created because of Diedrich Nichols getting his hand in there and punching that ball out. Scotty Montgomery, the head coach of ECU, was coming down the sideline to say, where's the pass interference there? Trying to plead his case for anything he could get. <laughs> Second interception of the year for Nigel Harris. And it comes at a huge time with USF trying to stay as the lead horse in the East Division in the American. They'll go to five and one if they hang on for a win here. Two and oh in conference play. Toward the edge and it. Marlon Mack. With a lead block from his quarterback. Talked about breaking through at the top of the show. And right in here, teams start breaking through. They find ways to win. They come up with answers. Been a little sluggish for the Bulls in the second half. But a big play on the fourth down, and then they're able to throw a rock on the gas pedal when they need it. Four key players, Quentin Flowers, Marlon Mack, Dearness Johnson, Rodney Adams, Flowers, and Mack involved here. Running zone, and he winds it all the way back. And we know. <laughs> Is Greg Ward doing that in Houston? Yeah. Flowers <laughs> not afraid of contact. Got a lot of skill players on this South Florida team. That is quite a tandem. You throw in Rodney Adams out of receiver. Plenty of skill here in the Bay Area. All these streaks live on 35 plus points, 200 plus rushing yards, which Mac has a buck 52, Flowers 105, Mac has two touchdowns on the ground. And Ernest Johnson, two catches for touchdowns as well. So the running back's a big part of the offense. You know, they may fall short of their average. You go back the last nine games, South Florida is averaging 46 points a game behind only Texas Tech and Louisville. Take a win any way you can get it. Shorter kick there for Madelman. And returned out across the 30-yard line. So about three minutes to go here for ECU. And they've got a chance. Still a two-score game, 16-point difference. But it will be very difficult given the way momentum has just swung. You need one-word plays and formations. Receivers got to stay on their side of the of the ball and you got to get lined up and get out of bounds. They're electing to go empty just probably isn't isn't bad as long as you can protect. Minshew 
backup quarterback finds Terrell Green. That's just his third catch of the year. A little bit further down on the depth chart here. And he gets out of bounds on the first down grab. And they are. They're keeping their receivers on each side of the ball. Rotating Zay inside. Now Minshew, he's just got to scramble. And instead of going down hard, throws it away. And against ECU here is the fact that they've all got one timeout left. Lots Stop. more great games coming your way today. BYU, Michigan State, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, and Ohio State, Indiana. With a bit of a tie to this game as well. Pressure. Third and three up top. And nearly taken away as well. well we talked about the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers. This has been a nice day from the USF defense, which... They went into the 4-2-5 last year under Tom Allen, who's now the defensive coordinator at Indiana. Urban Meyer said this week on a radio show, he said, look, this is one of the best defenses we'll ever face against Indiana, where Tom Allen has gone to coach this year under Kevin Wilson. Work down, they've got it. Inside of two and a half minutes for the Pirates in their comeback try. Clock stopping on first down. And a 15 yard pickup. Been smart with the football. Right through the hands of Green. Gotta have those grabs. Looks like a young Dan Hawkins there trying to grab that ball. Still plenty of time. You have to play for this score. And then really, if the clock winds all the way down, let's just say you do score, then you're trying to get the onside kick and try to come up with a Hail Mary. But you really just need to focus on this play of this drive and this score. Now, you can't do that in this situation, young Mr. Minshew. The quarterback scramble is not in the repertoire. ECU uses its final timeout. Well, the matchup we'd love to see will not come in the regular season. USF does not face Houston during the regular season, but we saw Temple and Memphis put on a pretty good show the other night. So they'll go on the road, a 72% chance to win there at Lincoln Financial Field. And their toughest game on the schedule comes at Memphis at the Liberty Bowl. Just a 63% chance to win there. Do you like the Bulls to make it to the conference championship game? Or is you, it too early? You know how coaches are, right? <laughs> I mean, I think it's funny people look at that and projected win. You know what that means to a coach? Nothing. Nothing. You're trying to win today and then tomorrow. Uh, and you know what? As we all know, an injury to Flowers changes the whole picture. An injury to Mack changes the whole picture. You need to be able to catch that and get out of bounds. That's, that's not the way it's done. One word, one word, one formation, one play. Fourth and five, got to have it. With the Bulls and they are bringing pressure from over here. It's another turnover on downs. Understandably looking for Zay Jones. Johnny Ward with his left arm in front of the pass. Spot route. Just run into the chains. Run a little spot route in there. Better against zone than man. They've been playing a lot of zone. They ended up playing man on that down. Not a lot of separation in man coverage when you're running that spot route. This game will extend a difficult streak for ECU. It'll be their first four game losing streak in 12 years. Having to go back to 2004. And they are a member of Conference USA and went just two and nine that year. No timeouts 
for ECU. So a little bit surprising to see the Bulls come out in a true rushing formation. And yet they do. <laughs> and don't run out of bounds, which we have seen before. The head scratcher. ESPN goal line will be coming up next. You're on ESPN News, but a great slate of 3.30 games as well across our ESPN networks. And this game will continue a trend of dominance for USF against East Carolina. It'll be six games to one in the all-time series in favor of the Bulls. Just go down. Flowers takes it inside of a minute. A bit surprising still to see him out there, to be honest. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't really want to bring a backup quarterback in at this point, but it's to surprising it? to see him running. Did yeah. You get a backup in to kneel the ball? No, no, I wouldn't do that. I'd have my starter kneeling it, but. Now, one more snap. What? Oh, boy. What? Going up top for Dearness Johnson. And that's going to perhaps stoke some flames Ooh. among the coaching community. You tell me, Hawk. Keep your eye on the handshake. Keep your eye on the handshake. That was interesting. Now, we don't always know the behind the scenes banter. And they're going fast. And they're going for the end zone. Up top, Dearness Johnson. And there's a flag at the end of the play. This is as surprising as anything that has gone on here today. What in the world? Pass interference, offense, number eight, 15-yard penalty, first down. Scotty Montgomery is given the eagle eye. There is something going on that we don't know about. You know, there is there is one thing at stake here. It's maybe a scoring average. USF is averaging 46 points a game, and they're slated to come up short of that right now. Other than that, your guess is as good as mine. I'm curious. Are they going to go for the end zone again? Yeah, I don't know. One second left. They are. They are. This is a bizarre ending to a game that was quite close here in the fourth quarter. It was 24-22. USF ran away with it. And for reasons known only to him right now, Willie Taggart kept the foot on the accelerator at the end of the game. A brief handshake between both coaches as South Florida improves to five and one. Up. Well, it was spectacular. It was great effort by the Pirates coming back. When Minshew had to come in, they did not quit. The explosiveness of South Florida cannot be denied in the dynamic backfield of Flowers and Mack. What a combination. It was a fun one, and there's certainly more to follow from what we saw at the end of this game. We're glad you could enjoy it with us. South Florida 38, East Carolina 22. For my partner, Dan Hawkins, and our entire crew, I'm Mike Cousins, saying thanks for being with us. ESPN goal line and lots more football coming your way next.